I look like a flight attendant. <laughs> Hi, it's Trixie Mattel, and guess what? We're fixing a wig. Hi, it's Trixie Mattel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm filming myself today. Nick has the day off, so it's just me and Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Hi, girl. So today we have this wig that is, well, I'm not going to DragCon this year because I have the GLAAD Awards in New York City, and I was taking a trip down memory lane. I was like, whatever happened to that big, crazy wig that I wore to DragCon like the second year? Beautiful, right? Gorgeous, nice, giant, just incredible piece of work. This wig, I believe, is eight wigs, but over the years of just sitting in a closet, and it's just started to fall apart. Do you see how it's kind of just all over the place? So I thought this would be a fun little project to come on camera and like kind of rehabilitate the wig myself, because I used to do my own wigs. I did this wig. I used to do my own wigs. I weirdly like doing wigs. I just don't always have the time. So I thought I would fix up this wig, give you a few of my tips about wigs while I'm doing it. By the way, if you guys want to see a real wig stylist, go to James Mansfield's channel. That bitch does wigs. I'm a lowly, you know, wig person, um, wig, wig woman, wig, wig wom. I'm a wig wom. So I'm going to get my little bar cart of like wig items and I'll be right back. So I'm just looking at this wig and the first thing I like to do when I'm fixing a wig is, well, obviously I gotta pin it all the way around. This is not a lace front, so we don't have to block it or anything crazy. I just like to give it a good look and see like what is going on and what needs to be done. So right away I know that I'm gonna wanna re and smooth this face framing section, but I can probably do that last. My main area of like help is the back of this wig. Like all these individual sections need to get redressed and rebuilt from basically the top down. So I'm gonna start by taking some of the pins out and start sort of like reorganizing this wig. This is a really big piece. I believe the person who originally built this put eight wigs in it, so it's it's a lot. Um, I've never taken it apart. I don't even know what's in here. I'm assuming it's just wigs stacked on wigs as, as deep as your eye can detect, I'm assuming. I think a lot of this is just gonna have to get re-smoothed and re-gathered and like re-pinned. I think a lot of what we're gonna do today is just take these long sections, re-groom them and like re estate reinstate them. I believe the person who made this wig, I believe this was inspired by sort of um, Moschino runways, the Think Pink runway, because a lot of the hair was done to purposely look wiggy. Everything had like bizarre little ponytails and like face framing, like hair sculpting, and it made the wigs look purposely wiggy. And something I love about Jeremy Scott's shows is when he puts them in wigs, he wants them to look wiggy. Like there's that Wheel of Fortune runway they did over at Moschino where they were in these like true like brunch Hollywood Boulevard drag queen wigs. And I, I just love the look of that. I think it's so glamorous. By the way, you guys can't see, but I'm in these matching pants with this matching scarf today. And I think I'm kind of serving, but you guys can't see me anyway, so whatever. Okay, now that I'm looking at the wig, do you see, I'm kind of figuring out what's going on here. It looks like they were taking pieces of hair. Do you see how this hair is trained to go forward? to the front. Like some sections like this that are almost in good shape, I'm just gonna like groom them and let them be as they are. Cause I know that originally this wig was impressive because normally when wigs are this big, the surface looks a little more cottony. Everything looks like a helmet. This wig was really impressive in person because it was big, but still looked like it was packed with hair. And I'll tell you, this wig in fact was packed with hair. This wig was so heavy that on day two of DragCon, I went to the women's room and threw up because this wig gave me such a bad migraine. I don't know why it's like the new drag queen obsession is to wear human units. Everyone's trying to wear flat human hair. Like, I don't really know what that is because as a working drag queen, the last thing I want is some hair I just did to fall apart because it got wet or hot or humid. I don't really know why the baby queens are like, everybody wants the, the human units. I really don't know, but good for them. To me, that these front pieces right here and right here actually look pretty good. So I'm just gonna try to fix and groom these front sections. And then the back is where we're gonna have to basically reconstruct barrel curls. And I'll kind of explain what that is in a second. I was very lucky though, because when I was in beauty school, you know, when you're in beauty school, you have like, you have to do 20 perms. You have to do like 40 men's haircuts. You have like, there's a certain number of each discipline that you have to complete, at least at my school, which was the Aveda Institute of Beauty and Wellness. Luckily, my beauty school is really cool about me bringing in my own wigs and doing them. So instead of perming some random like mannequin head, I was allowed to like perm my wigs, which was really nice. Brandon was one of my hair models in beauty school once. It was really like a good year of me having to harass everyone I 
harass everyone at all times. Like, hey, do you need your haircut? Please come. Because when you're in beauty school and you're there like eight hours a day, every day, having a friend come in for a haircut, it is the light of your day. I don't know how to describe it, but you're like, oh my God, my friend's coming in at two o'clock for a bang trim. And you're just like thrilled about it. Because you're so scared of normal people, your real friends know that you're a student. So your real friends, you're not scared of cutting their hair. Whereas I noticed, and any of you who went to beauty school can back me up on this, a lot of times the people most difficult with their hair it's like, well, why did you come to a school? If you wanted it perfect, if you wanted it the same way you got it done last time, why are you coming to a school? Why are you having inexperienced students do it for half the price, but expecting the same exact results as when you have somebody who's 10 years in the industry do it? You know what I mean? There's a reason why you go to professionals. Now, I will say, most of what you get done at a beauty school is probably gonna be good because our teachers are breathing down our necks. So like, we wouldn't be paying 20 grand a year to be there if we didn't want to learn how to do this and do it well. So if somebody says something was botched by a student, I'm like, mm, you were probably just type, not the type of bitch you should have ever went to a beauty school to get your hair done. You know what I mean? I'm trying to take all these individual pieces and put them at the top so that I can start rolling from the bottom. And that way, as I finish the nape, I can then attack the occipital and then like the crown and then the top of the head. A lot of you people who watch these videos probably are hairstylists. And you know, I mean, working with synthetic hair is really, its own journey. It's not the same as normal wigs. Synthetic hair is basically plastic, which is why when you style synthetic hair, you can use heat, but not too much, or it melts. You can, you know, put product in it, but because it's plastic and it's not porous, it's not gonna absorb product. Like when you see drag queens putting like oil sheen in a synthetic wig, I'm like, that's gonna end up on your costume. You're gonna whip your hair out and that oil's gonna, like, that oil has nowhere to go. You really just like should remember that wigs are plastic and you gotta treat them like plastic. The other nice thing is once you do your wigs like in the curl pattern you want, the wig is gonna be curled that way pretty much until you change it again. So like this wig has been styled and restyled so many times and I've never recurled it. I'll brush it out, I'll take out the teasing, redo it, but I've never had to recurl it ever. And this wig gets worn all the time. You'll see me wearing this on Netflix and stuff all the time because it's just easy. This hair feels like costume. This feels like the RuPaul Party City wigs. It feels like really, really, really costumey. So I have to be careful with my plan of attack here because sometimes with these cheap wigs, the more you brush them and shit, the more they start to like disintegrate. The integrity of the wig starts to fall apart. So you gotta be a little careful. See how this is like, basically I'm gonna redo the whole wig to have little chignons like this. That's what, that's how I'm gonna do this. And I don't wanna fix this wig again. So I'm gonna try to just like do this correctly the first time. <laughs> I'm already exhausted. <sighs> By the way, you know what's crazy, you guys? When I got on RuPaul's Drag Race, I was 24 years old. I was in beauty school, right? And I was a working makeup artist, hold for laughter. I was a working makeup artist and I wanted to learn to do hair because I was like, well, I love doing brides and stuff. And if I could learn to do hair, I could be very valuable, right? So I was in beauty school and that's when I was auditioning for Drag Race. And I remember I was in class and I got a call from a 323 number from Los Angeles and I'd never got a call from Los Angeles in my life. And I was like, I better step out and get this. And school was really strict about phone calls. So I had to like hide in school and take the call. And they were like, you know, kind of like, we just wanted to let you know that like we're, you know, you're, we want you to move on to the next round of audition, whatever. But I remember I was in beauty school and I was like having to focus on everything I was learning in school while simultaneously like not freaking out and not, you know, I don't want to gas myself up if something's not happening. You know what I mean? So I remember being in beauty school, we were just starting aesthetics because part of beauty school is skin and nails so we were just starting aesthetics so like we were going to start as extraction stuff like that and i got on drag race and i remember i walked into school and i did i they told you not to tell anyone so i didn't tell anyone so i just went to beauty school one day i clocked out i grabbed my all my belongings from beauty school and I just left because I was so scared if I told beauty school what I was doing that I would get in trouble. Looking back, I probably should have been honest and just told like the teachers like, hey, I'm going to do drag race. But I come back like a month and a half later and I just go back to school because I'm looking at the calendar and I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to finish beauty school. But since I paid for it, I might as well stay as long as I can. So I just stayed in beauty school as long as I could because I worked front desk at a salon in Milwaukee. So I kept my salon job. You guys, I was like doing my first drag race gigs and like traveling and I was like coming home from a tour in the UK and then like going back to work at the front desk at the salon. I kept my job at rock bottom. I kept my local drag gigs with bingo and stuff because I was like, I'm not going to be Miss Boo Boo the Fool who like quits all your jobs and six months later, you don't have anywhere, any way to eat. Yeah, I actually would love to do a video where I go back to Milwaukee and work a day at all my old jobs. Would you guys be into that? I think that would be fun. I'm going to go and like finish at least like the nape of the neck down and I'm going to be right back. 
All right, I'm having a change of heart. Like I was doing these individual barrels and I got to the nape of the neck and I was like, but this isn't a short wig, it's a long wig. So then I started letting out. So you guys see I started letting these out. I think the move is gonna be to like let them all lay down and then decide what they are. Cause I think the ends are what's most important. Like this should look like little sections of hair. This is so corny, but it really is it. Like you just have to listen to the wig. You just have to listen to the wig. Like right now I'm letting the wig be and then I'm gonna take the very ends of these sections and just just brush them out. That way, once all this hair is down, the ends that you see are smooth, but the inside is still a ratted up cage. And that's how you get height. I mean, this wig basically has a like styrofoam football inside it. Do you see how the bottom's starting to look more like, okay, it kind of looks like still. Just wor work with me here, people, okay? I am here. I am down here working. You guys, this wig is so long. I think the bottom is gonna be a little unsavable. Do you see how long these pieces are? So I think I am gonna have to chop it like, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to cut your wigs. I just like, I think in the beginning of my drag career, I was so scared of like ruining wigs. So I would wear wigs that didn't work for me for a long time. It's like all these heavy plastic wigs are all one length and so long and so heavy. You should cut layers into wigs. Just do like a YouTube tutorial on how to cut layers into like long hair. Proportions just always matter. I, everybody should wear whatever kind of hair they're comfortable with. There's a reason why I wear big wigs. Cause I have a giant man's body and a giant brick face. So like for me, doing big hair works. But I always see drag queens with like brick jaws where I'm like, why are you wearing that wig? I think the way I'm gonna do this is I think I'm gonna make the back of it all smooth. You know when you get a little doll at McDonald's and the doll has like hard plastic hair? That's the look I think I'm gonna end up wanting from this. So I'm just gonna focus on the back for now because the back is where the struggle is. And then the front can always be fixed at the end. I think it's actually gonna be really pretty. There's all these bald spots though, where like the hair is just not. <laughs> Good thing no one's taller than me, because oftentimes the top of my wigs, you're like, hmm, that doesn't look right. I'm gonna keep brushing and come back. Hi, I'm back. So you can see this is like, ugh, it's turning into a mountain of hair. You can see I'm brushing it all out. It's just a mountain of hair. So I think what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna cut this like, mm, like here. We're gonna cut about there. And then what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to do hot rollers all around the bottom because right now, do you guys see on the Trixie doll how the hair like all the way around is nice and curled and perfect and flawless? By the way, the Trixie doll is still available on shop.integritytoys.com. If you guys wanna see me unveil her, she's in this video. She's just flawless. I think from the front especially, this is actually really coming together. You can see that this is going to be really pretty. I We do need a haircut though. I got these scissors. This is really not scientific, you guys. I'm just gonna like, Again, I know that this hair is all gonna be curled anyway, so I'm just chop, chop, chopping. That's gonna make it so much easier to work with. And then this is like a good tip for when you're lazy and you're just slicing wigs, cut vertically. We call this chipping into the hair. I'm so like a fake hair stylist. I do not do hair anymore, but basically, you know, when you're cutting hair, you have the option of going straight across or you can chip which is ultimately, especially if you're curling, gonna give you more of an end that you want. So you can take the end and sort of like, chip vertically, and then you get more of like a diffused end. You don't get hair that ends in a blunt line. It's also a way in beauty school that we uh, camouflage mistakes. So if you ever see your teacher coming by and doing a lot of point cutting like that, it's because the haircut, <laughs> the haircut's all over the place. Again, I'm just trying to make use of this wig. This wig, when I first got it, was something like $800, which at the time, I couldn't believe how expensive, I mean, I just, and she knocked it out of the park. It was amazing at the time and it was worth every penny. And that's why I, I'm trying to just save, save it because I'm like, it was so amazing. I only got to wear it for one weekend. So like, if I can turn it into something functional, I'm gonna be really happy. I'm just taking a big natural bristle kind of brush to smooth out the top layer so I can see what this is gonna look like. On this side, you can really start to see what this is gonna be. You can see like, oh, this hair is all gonna go straight down. It's gonna be curly on the bottom. And it, it, it is definitely gonna look wiggy, wiggy smalls. And now that I have the ends done, I'm like, okay, great. I'm just gonna take and do little curlers in the bottom so that the ends don't just sit there. It's one of my favorite tricks when I don't know what to do with the bottom of synthetic hair, I just throw it in hot curlers and that way it does something instead of just laying there. Cause plastic hair, when it's not curled or anything, it really just lays there. It just looks sad. Like how much better is this all gonna be when the end is like a little flip? That's gonna be so much better. 
Doesn't that look like exactly my face? I'm gonna grab a bunch of my hot rollers and be right back. So we're back. So it's all like smoothed out as good as it can be. And it is, you know, from the front, you can tell it's gonna, it's gonna turn out. It's gonna work out kids. So basically now what I have to do is go in and everywhere there's an end of hair, I'm gonna have to curl it. Again, this isn't exactly like textbook hairdressing, but with drag, if it's gonna make it look good, just do it. I mean, destroy the hair, break the rule, who cares? In this case, we're taking a wig that was unusable sitting in a closet. So any, if we could turn it into anything usable, we're happy. But do you see how even up here, it's starting to look like um, Princess Aurora's hair, Sleeping Beauty, kind of. You can see the more I brush it, the more it's just kind of releasing. There was just so much product in it. But you can see that that's gonna look from the back. I would buy that. It's nice and smooth, or it will be. So now I got a bunch of my hot rollers here. <laughs> I'm gonna turn so you guys can see me. So I'm basically taking this piece of hair. It's kind of a big section for this, but whatever. I'm just gonna do it again because I'm only concerned with the ends anyway. So taking the ends, I'm gonna take a big fat curler because I don't want it to be a tight curl down here. I want it to be kind of loose. And I'm just gonna try to wrap it as smoothly as I can. You might get a little bit of fish hooking, but when I'm trying to basically save a wig like this, I don't mind accidentally doing a little bit of damage, you know? So I'm gonna basically do a bunch of hot rollers in this area and we'll be right back. All right, so I pretty much did a very light like roller and I pulled the roller out before it was like totally cool. What I didn't want is for the bottom of the hair to be truly curled. I just want it to be soft waved because all the pieces we're doing up here are soft waves. So on the bottom, you can see it's a very soft, like just little, it's not like the best bottom of a wig I've ever seen in my life, but I'm gonna try it on and we'll see what it looks like and let's finish it on camera. I feel like with wigs, until you put it on, you don't totally know. So let's put this wig on and see what the tea is. Well, this piece, I have like this little face framing piece that needs to get pinned. See, there's just a few things that you just cannot do till you get the wig on your head. Do you guys see it though? It's very different than my other wigs because it, I mean, this one really looks like doll hair. I almost like how cheap the plastic is because it, this looks wiggy. Do you know what I mean? I kind of like how it looks wiggy. And because this face framing piece, I mean, it's like a hard front wig. I think what I'm gonna do is finish this and then I'm gonna start pulling out some of these wave clips because I gotta know what the T is. So let's start pulling out some of these wave clips. I think what I'm gonna have to do when I wear this wig is basically put it on, groom it around my shoulders and then like finish it. Do you know what I mean? Like this should really be one over the shoulder like that. And then this one. I think this side is gonna go back over the shoulder and then this side's gonna be forward. Look how pretty that is. Oh, I love her. I love this wig and now I'm depressed that it's been sitting in a box for like five years when it just needed a little TLC. Like this for a photo shoot, this is so cutty. And then how does the back look? I think it just looks really full and wavy, a little too full even. But what do you guys think? I'm kind of still playing with it, but I think I pretty much saved it. I mean, this wig was like in wig purgatory. And now I think with the right outfit, it could actually work. You guys never give up on your wigs. You never know. You never know what you could just get in there and fix. Where is she? Oh, love her. Look how cute that little like face framing piece is. Don't you love that? If anything, I think it needs a little more height here. I'm not being funny. I think it could just use a little height here, but I really like it. What do you guys think? Well, if you see this on Netflix or at uh or something, you'll know what I was doing when I was fixing it. But moral of the story is I loved this wig so much and they did such a good job on it. And I'm just happy that some version of it has come back to life. Although after wearing it for a few minutes, I remember why I don't wear it. It's extremely heavy. It's like wearing a backpack on your head. It's really heavy. I'll see you guys around the neighborhood. If you like this type of wig video, I don't know, maybe we do a series where I just like repair wigs and just shoot the shit. And maybe it's not very technical. Cause again, if you wanna learn how to do wigs, James Mansfield's channel is like basically free beauty school for wigs. Ooh, I'm feeling it. I'm gonna take pictures of myself, bye.